No, the new law is uh, identical to the old law. In fact, if you look at what the current law is, it's section 161 and 162 of the Act, the Crimes Act, and those sections are going to remain in the Act. What we are commencing is section 163 as added by the Parliament, which in effect assists the interpretation of sections 161 and 162. But let's be very clear. The law today already allows for the mother's life to be saved in the event that after 28 weeks, which is today the, um, the number of weeks that must have passed for a fetus to be considered to be viable under our law, if after 28 days the life of the mother is at risk, an abortion will be performed in those circumstances. And indeed, fatal fetal abnormality has already been considered in the case law to be a relevant consideration in that context. What we're doing in the new law is bringing the 28 weeks down to 12. So actually it's a more restrictive law. It doesn't set 28 weeks as the bar, it sets 12 weeks as the bar. And then what will happen is that there will be not a permission for an abortion, but a medical decision that there might be a need for an abortion thereafter before the end of the ninth month, right, of gestation. Now that, maintains the position under the old law and provides the interpretative guideline in the legislation. So it is entirely untrue for the No campaign to suggest that somehow this is a law which permits women to go and seek an abortion up to the ninth month. I've had a letter today from really aggrieved and disappointed healthcare professionals who cannot believe the way that the No campaign have sought to misinterpret the law and seek to mislead the public in relation to this issue of when abortion would be permitted. The new abortion law, the one that we're proposing, should be commenced after a positive result in the referendum on Thursday is about weeks 0 to 12. Everything that happens after week 12 is about saving the life of the mother or fatal, fatal, fetal abnormality. And grave permanent injury to the physical and mental health of the woman. It's not just saving the life, it's also... Yes, uh, there but, is a third circumstance. Yes, but that, that very grave circumstance is very, very grave. I mean, we're talking there not of the issues which might be relevant in weeks 0 to 12. This is extraordinarily grave a circumstance. But look, after 24 weeks now, it is possible for a child to be born alive. So we're not going anywhere near the UK law in respect to abortion. We're going for a much lower time limit. This is a much more restrictive law than is proposed in the United Kingdom, that is in effect in the United Kingdom. So I think even the comparisons which are being made with the numbers of abortions in the UK are entirely a fruit of the desire of the No campaign to exaggerate in order to mislead. You've been accused of being inaccurate and misleading by saying that the new law restricts abortions to 12 weeks, whereas the current law has no term limits. But the new law also allows abortions beyond those 12 weeks in a wider range of circumstances as we've seen before in three potential circumstances instead of just one. But that is simply a misunderstanding of the common law. What we've done in this act is to go down the road of codifying what would be the common law that would apply in the same way as happened in the United Kingdom in 1967 when they codified the common law into the act which we now have today in the UK where we have taken those three different strands and now brought them into our proposed law that should be commenced on Thursday if people approve it in the referendum. So we've got to really understand what our existing statute means based not just on what it says, but the common law that has interpreted it. And therefore, I think it's very important for people not to allow themselves to be misled by allegations that we're somehow producing a law that is much more lax than the one that we have today in the context of the period leading after the 12-week period to the ninth month. This debate has been very much framed in terms of liberalizing Gibraltar's abortion laws. Do you think, given that uh, explanation, that uh, terminology is still correct? I think it's important that we understand what is happening. What it can happen within the first 12 weeks of a pregnancy is not something which is at large. And the No campaign seemed to suggest that this is some, somehow the issue of a choice, as if a woman were going to sit and pick uh, the, the petals of a daffodil to decide what to do. There are medical criteria that will be in play before a woman can have an abortion in the first uh, zero to 12 weeks. And thereafter, the issue of a termination is exclusively one 
of the, the life of the mother being in danger, a fatal fetal abnormality, which tells you that already there is uh, very little chance of the baby being born alive, um, or indeed very grave danger to the mother, which is a very, very high bar under the existing legislation. So it is untrue. It is a lie. It is a, an attempt to mislead the voting public to suggest that this law somehow permits abortion up to the ninth month. That is a complete misnomer. At the ninth month, indeed, after the 24th week, you can have a birth alive. You don't have to have a termination or abortion if the mother's life is at risk. The pro-life campaign's argument is that even after 12 weeks, risks to life of the pregnant woman greater than if the pregnancy were terminated, the wording of the new law, can still be used as grounds for abortion on demand as there is an inherent risk to life in any pregnancy greater than if there weren't one. So what's your response to that? Well, I think that's complete and utter nonsense. That's an attempt to use the issue of risk as one which will simply cloud the decision-making process of the medical professionals, and it denigrates the professionalism of those in our healthcare system. And that's why I think our healthcare professionals are so disappointed with the way that the No campaign has been run, because they've really tried to run a coach and horses through the really professional work that is done in the Gibraltar Health Authority with women who are uh, pregnant in any situation, and in particular with those who are in distress or who have uh, difficulty arising in their pregnancy. And I think this is really a time for people to take stock to look at the way that the law has been framed, to read the neutral information document, to make up their minds for themselves. And I think in that context, they will vote on Thursday to trust women, to trust healthcare professionals, and to vote yes for the commencement of this law. You've said this is a modern law on abortion that protects women in Gibraltar. You've previously said the current law is unconstitutional and contravenes human rights. If so, the question remains, why not just pass the law instead of subjecting Gibraltar to a divisive referendum on something that you say is a question of human rights? The government has an opinion from David Panic, a very eminent silk, a Lord Panic, that tells us that our current law is in breach of Article 8 of the European Convention of Human Rights, but we accept that this is an issue which is a moral issue for many people. For that reason and for all the reasons that I explained in Parliament, we want people to be able to commence this law if they think it is appropriate, or for the community to tell the Parliament that they do not wish to see this law commence. Now, the fact that something is divisive because it brings up deep emotions in people is not a good reason to avoid consulting the public on that. In fact, it is the very best reason to consult the public because if you look at the issue of the margin of appreciation, also one of the issues that we debated in Parliament, whether this community considers it is right or wrong to have this law, then we must have a consultation which gives us the result of what people feel and think. The fact that there are extremes of views should not mean that we are uh, reticent to hear those views. It should mean that we should listen to those views, but that those views should be expressed in a way that is respectful and in a way that does not seek to mischaracterize or to mislead what the public are being asked to vote on.